Thank you. Uh, my name is Abdel Mohsen Al Husseini, and I'm the CTO of Analytical Space. Uh, we are building a global data relay service powered by the world's first laser communication CubeSat constellation. Um, so today, you have about 600 remote sensing satellites orbiting the Earth, uh, collecting imagery for a wide range of applications and generating a lot of data. Every few hours, you have an entire library of, of Congress worth of data generated in orbit, and that's only going to increase. Uh, it's estimated over the next five years, uh, 2,600 more satellites are going up, and uh, they're de generating more and more data-rich uh, products. There is um, a big bottleneck, though, in getting that data from space down to Earth, and that's driven primarily by geographic constraints. Earth is 70% uh, water, and satellites need a direct line of sight to the ground using existing technology. So you really only get two to three hours of useful time to send data down, and satellites are idle the rest of the time. So terrible asset utilization uh, today. Um, and uh, also a lot of lag. So uh, the time between data acquisition to downlink is uh, now from several hours to several days. Uh, at Analytical Space, we're working to fix that problem. And the way we're doing that is we're launching a constellation of small satellites the size of this frame in my hand. And we're putting them in complementary orbits to where satellites are. So now when they're over the ocean doing nothing, instead they send the data across to us. We store it. They've emptied their hard drives. And then we send it to the ground using laser communication. The advantage of doing that is now we can triple their asset utilization. Uh, because we're using laser, we have a bandwidth that is orders of magnitude higher than existing RF technology for the same size and power. And we do all that at a fraction of the cost of existing solutions. Um, we started as a company two and a half years ago, and we've launched uh, our first satellite uh, this May. You can see it uh, going up here on, uh, on the video. And it was on a NASA mission. That was a cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station. You can see the Cygnus module docking with the International Space Station carrying our spacecraft. And on Friday, on July, Friday the 13th of all days, uh, astronauts put our satellite into an airlock and deployed it uh, into space. And now it's fully operational and we're getting uh, good data. You can see it here rise above the horizon uh, as it's starting to free fly. Uh, so uh, that's kind of our operations room. We have a uh, long list of beta testers we're working with uh, from you know, commercial, government, academic institutions. We have a wait list of beta testers, and our second satellite is going up end of this year. And at scale, we're really trying to build a constellation. So we're talking about a lot more than a single satellite or two. Um, and at full scale, we'll be able to achieve real-time, high-throughput data from space. Um, what that really will enable is a lot of exciting new possibilities. So to give you a sense of what that might look like, uh, we can give the same size satellites the ability to move to higher spatial resolutions. Um, and to give you a sense, uh, to move from pixel sizes of 5 meters to 50 centimeters, uh, that's 100x in the, in the amount of data generated per square kilometer. But that's the difference between being able to say, you know, I think there's a car here, to saying that car door is open. Um, you know, and for the same uh, size, uh, and you know, for the same spatial resolution, you could move to higher temporal resolution. So instead of getting images once a week, you can now do it, you know, once a day or even less. Uh, but there's also new sensors. Uh, you have synthetic aperture radar, which is very power and data intensive, uh, but it can do cool things like uh, image at night and image uh, through clouds. It can be very useful for applications like uh, Arctic mapping and iceberg tracking. So that has huge implications for Arctic shipping, because if you know where the icebergs are, you can drop shipping times from months to weeks. And that uh, saves a lot of time and fuel uh, for the shipping industry. Uh, and another thing is uh, for agriculture. So if you start using, you know, instead of red, green, blue pixels, and saying this field looks kind of green, if you move to higher spectral sensors, 30, 60 spectral bands, that's a lot more data, but then you can get actionable insights and being able to say things like, this field looks like wheat, uh, it looks nitrogen deficient, and it needs to be watered. So uh, huge implications for precision agriculture and increasing crop yield. Uh, and if you're able to have enough satellite density and dropping the lag between data acquisition and downlink to below 15 minutes, uh, you can start doing things like real-time weather tracking, uh, which would have huge implications, for example, for the aviation industry. 
uh, and you can more efficiently route airplane traffic around bad weather. So you can save significant fuel, up to 20% fuel in the airline industry. Uh, other things uh, are asset tracking. So you could uh, pick up uh, data from transmitters, ADSB transmitters on planes, uh, AIS signals from, uh, from ships, uh, container ships and, and fishing boats. So you could get a much better understanding of the global supply chain in real time and the movement of goods uh, across our planet. So you can really start to unlock incredible new possibilities. And you know, at the end of the day, we only have one Earth. Uh, and at Analytical Space, we are trying to build the infrastructure to make planetary big data a reality so you can uh, unlock possibilities and use space to improve life on Earth. Thank you.